Also tonight, music mogul Sean Diddy Combs, accused of sex trafficking and sexual assault in a lawsuit filed in federal court here in New York. New lawsuit against Sean Diddy Combs, bringing some serious claims against the music mogul brought by his former longtime girlfriend. Puffy might be the destination for anybody going nowhere. Nobody survived. In recent news, music mogul Sean Diddy Combs has been accused of sex trafficking and sexual assault in a lawsuit filed in federal court in New York. The allegations are serious and have been brought forth by his former longtime girlfriend, Cassie. In the complaint submitted to federal district court in Manhattan, Cassie, whose real name is Cassandra Ventura and who had been in a long-standing romantic relationship with Mr. Combs, alleges that shortly after meeting him in 2005 at the age of 19, he initiated a pattern of manipulation and mistreatment. This alleged behavior included giving her drugs, physically assaulting her, and coercing her into engaging in sexual activities with multiple male escorts while he recorded the encounters. According to the suit, in 2018, towards the end of their relationship, Mr. Combs allegedly broke into her residence and sexually assaulted her. In a statement, Ms. Ventura remarked, After years in silence and darkness, I am finally ready to tell my story and to speak up on behalf of myself and for the benefit of other women who face violence and abuse in their relationships. It seems that even if there was any plan for a soft landing for Diddy, it won't be happening anytime soon as rapper 50 Cent is out for blood. He recently revealed in an exclusive video that everyone had forgotten how Diddy had abused Cassie. It's no secret that Diddy has a history of abuse, and it's not just limited to one person. His past actions could fill a spreadsheet from the White House down to Connecticut. It's a troubling pattern of behavior that has finally caught up to him. The odds are stacked against him, and it seems that he might not be able to come out of this as a free man. But what is this video that 50 Cent has that could end Diddy? Is it a smoking gun that will finally bring him down? And is there any way that Diddy can redeem himself and make amends for his past actions? These are all questions that we'll be exploring in this video. At the prestigious Met Gala red carpet event in 2015, among the many attendees were the famous couple Cassie and Sean Combs, also known as Diddy. As they made their way down the red carpet, they were greeted by the event's host who was eager to ask them about their intriguing music video, 3 AM. Despite the glamorous surroundings, there was a noticeable tension in the air, particularly from Cassie, who appeared slightly nervous about the attention and questions directed their way. Nonetheless, both Cassie and Diddy maintained composed smiles as they navigated through the interview. If you understand what's going on in that video at 3 a.m. and what Diddy was hinting to Andre about sending via email, you'll realize that Cassie dodged a scary situation when she left him. This part of the story focuses on the videos and sex tapes Diddy sent, and the 3 a.m. video was just an extension of all that. But making such a bold claim requires proof, right? Specifically, what evidence could someone like 50 Cent have had that could have seriously harmed Diddy if Cassie had taken him to court? Let's rewind a bit and dive into the early 90s, around 1991, before Bad Boy Records even existed and before Diddy became a big name. There's this woman named Joey Dickerson Neal, and she accused Diddy of assaulting her while she was in college and he was still a talent agent. She claimed that he spiked her drink during a date, and when she couldn't walk, he took advantage of her at his music studio. But here's the twist. Diddy filmed the assault and shared it with two of his friends. How do we know this? Because Devante Swing from the R&B group Jodeci told her, this isn't just gossip, it's backed up by evidence, and the people involved haven't retracted their statements. Both Dickerson Neal and Combs shared mutual friends and acquaintances, the suit says. Dickerson Neal also once appeared with Combs in a music video. Joy Dickerson Neal lodged her complaint in Manhattan Supreme Court just before the New York State Adult Survivors Act expiration date, as per court documents obtained by USA Today. She claims she was drugged, sexually assaulted, abused, and subjected to revenge porn. According to the lawsuit, Combs recorded the assault in January 1991 and shared the video with others in the music industry. This action inflicted severe harm to Miss Dickerson Neal's reputation, career prospects, and emotional well-being as stated by Dickerson Neal's attorney, Jonathan Goldhirsch, in a news release sent to USA Today on Thursday. 
Bad Boy Entertainment, Bad Boy Records, and Combs Enterprises are named as defendants in the lawsuit, with Dickerson seeking a trial by jury. The recent allegations against Combs relate to a period when he was on the cusp of his rise to fame. Back in 1991, before his debut album, No Way Out, was released, Combs worked as a talent director at Uptown Records, according to the filing. Now, if you're wondering why she didn't report it to the police right away, it's because she felt ashamed and feared losing the record deal Diddy promised her. Fast forward to the 90s, the rise of Bad Boy Records, and eventually Cassie. The pattern is clear. Diddy used promises of record deals to control female artists he wanted to assault. That's why Cassie got a 10-year album deal right from the start, which was highly unusual. Not to criticize Cassie, but let's be honest. Her singing abilities weren't exactly top-notch. Cassie's talent was a mixed bag. She didn't quite have the knack for writing, and while she could dance, it wasn't anything groundbreaking. But what caught Diddy's attention wasn't her lyrical prowess or her choreography skills. It was her stunning looks. Diddy was smitten, and he was determined to have her by any means necessary. So he embarked on a diabolical quest to win her over. And once he had her, he wasn't about to let go easily. Cassie's ordeal with Diddy paints a chilling picture of manipulation and coercion. In her lawsuit, she bravely recounted how Diddy forced her into degrading situations, including having sex with male escorts while he watched and derived pleasure from it. But it didn't stop there. Diddy went so far as to make Cassie seek out these escorts herself, and before each encounter, he would drug her. To add insult to injury, he recorded these vile acts, turning them into tools of blackmail. The extent of Diddy's control over Cassie is truly disturbing. Those tapes became a means of manipulation, a way for Diddy to ensure she remained under his thumb. Anytime Cassie considered leaving, Diddy would threaten to release the footage, effectively trapping her in a cycle of fear and abuse. And when 50 Cent stumbled upon a similar tape in 2010, it shed further light on the depravity of Diddy's actions. The outburst by 50 Cent about Diddy from back in 2010 when he talked about Diddy's relationship with Cassie, has come back into the spotlight. This happened after Diddy, the guy who started Bad Boy Records, was accused by his former girlfriend of doing something bad. While chatting with DJ Woo Kid on Shade 45, 50 Cent said he got some really revealing pictures of Cassie, and then he talked to Diddy about it on the phone. You fucking with this girl, like you really, like, you like her, like that? And he was like, yeah, that's, that's my girl. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna send you something. You look at it, you call me back. They sent me the girl's pictures, he recounted, referring to Cassie. Not the stuff that everyone saw, worse, much worse. Like, really explicit pictures. I called the guy and asked him, Are you involved with this girl? Do you really like her? He replied, Yeah, she's my girl. So I said, Okay, I'll send you something. Take a look and call me back. Indeed, shortly after, Diddy gave him a call, insisting that his associates had somehow come across the images by mistake. But he remained unconvinced. Familiar with Diddy's strategies, he understood that those pictures weren't just randomly found. They were intentionally obtained and kept as leverage against Cassie. It was Diddy's method of ensuring he had control over her. He went on to say, I sent him the photos, the pictures, everything. He called me back and said, thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Where did you get these from? They know that if something outrageous is happening, if they send it to me, I'll make sure it gets out there, so they sent it to me. I had this feeling that those photographs weren't because of Cassie, they were because of Puffy. That moment became a turning point for him, a moment where he became completely disillusioned with Diddy. It wasn't solely about the pictures, it was about the manipulative techniques he utilized to assert dominance over Cassie. And it all began with that seemingly insignificant shopping incident. During the interview, 50 also referred to Diddy as a b and made fun of his Diddy Dirty Money trio. He implied that Diddy collaborated with Don Richard and Kalena Harper to position himself as the hot one in the group to attract other men. In the wake of Cassie filing a lawsuit against Diddy, alleging rape and domestic abuse during their relationship, allegations strongly denied by the rap mogul, 50 Cent has been taunting his longtime rival. The strained relationship between 50 Cent and Diddy stands as a cornerstone in New York's hip-hop scene dynamics. Given 50 Cent's penchant for trolling, it seems that anything Diddy does inevitably comes under his scrutiny. 
However, this particular case carried much weight, revolving around Cassie's allegations of sexual and physical abuse against the bad boy mogul. Despite reaching a settlement swiftly, the G-Unit MC believes that this does not mark the end of Sean Combs' public reckoning. In fact, in an old interview, presumably during a Drink Champs appearance, he recounted the purported story of how Diddy once mentioned to him that he wanted to take him shopping. It remains uncertain whether the Queens rapper found this notion peculiar or interpreted it as an invitation for something more than just a leisurely outing. Then he was like, yo, he's like, yo, so yo, when are we going to get the chance to, you know, to kick it like we can just hang out? And he's like, yo, why we like go shopping? I mean, like I pay for it. I was like, foo asterisk, K this just say. Then he was like, yo, he's like, yo, so yo, when we gonna get the chance to, you know, to kick it, like we can just hang out. Then he was like, yo, why don't we like go shopping? I mean, like I pay for it. And I was like, what the fuck this just say? <laughs> Nevertheless, the clip is so chaotic that they seemingly didn't think much of it at the time. Despite Fifth's lighthearted approach, he didn't hesitate to caution others that Combs may not be the person he appears to be. Additionally, he turned to Instagram to express his thoughts on this latest development and speculate on what might ensue. LOL, 50 Cent began his caption bluntly, accompanying it with a screenshot of a news article detailing Diddy's settlement. He paid that money real quick, should have done that before the sharks saw the blood in the water, and here they come in, every woman he ever put his hand on. This evaluation holds some truth in certain respects, as this explosive case prompted many to unearth other allegations from Puff Daddy's past partners and take a closer look at his current social circle. Let's take into account, if Rick Ross had been caught up in that situation, 50 Cent wouldn't have just brushed it off. I mean, seriously, 50 Cent didn't hold back when he used sex tapes against Rick Ross before. So it's crystal clear that 50 could feel something fishy going on between Cassie and Diddy. He could see right through the surface of their relationship. It was way beyond just a rocky romance. It was downright poisonous. Those pictures he sent to Diddy for confirmation, they were like a smoking gun, confirming all his suspicions. But you know what's really striking? The warning signs were there from the beginning, right there on Diddy's Instagram for anyone who cared to notice. Remember that time Cassie seemed like she was trying to hide under the covers, desperate to get away from Diddy? What's the excuse for that now? Seriously, what's your explanation? Sure, you could argue that none of this is solid proof of abuse, but let's be real here. If you were aware of Diddy's history with his past partners, if you knew how he treated the mother of his children, if you knew what he put Kim Porter through, you wouldn't be questioning the importance of that Instagram video. You'd see Diddy for who he truly is, a manipulative, sinister serial abuser. Hey, what's up, y'all? We interrupt your browsing for this emergency announcement. Um, this is my girl, Kim, my lovely girlfriend, KP, Kim Porter. Hey, what's up, y'all? We interrupt your browsing for this emergency announcement. Um, this is my girl, Kim, my lovely girlfriend, KP, Kim Porter. Let me tell you a story. It's back in 2005, and by then, Diddy and Kim Porter had been together for over 10 years. Well, Technically, they had been in an on-and-off relationship for more than a decade, as she put it. During one of those times when they were together, Diddy heard a rumor. The rumor was that Kim had started dating someone else who worked with Diddy in the music industry. So Diddy tricked her into going to St. Tropez, where he rented a yacht and made Kim think they were going to have a good time. But that wasn't the case at all. The bodyguards heard loud arguments starting at 2 a.m., and by 7 a.m., things had turned violent. In the end, Diddy had beaten Kim so badly that he broke her nose. After the incident, Diddy flew in a specialist surgeon from Geneva to fix Kim's nose and kept her out of the public eye until it healed enough. But here's where it gets even crazier. If you try to find this story online, you won't find anything. Articles that originally reported the story, like The Sun, have mysteriously removed it and images of Kim with a bandage on her nose from that time have almost completely disappeared from the internet. This is one of the few surviving images left. My theory? Diddy went to great lengths to erase any digital evidence of what happened to make sure there was no trace. Because back in 2005, this was a big deal, and he knew he messed up big time. But hey, you don't have to take my word for it or believe some newspaper. Gene Deal also talked about it. In videos shared on YouTube, 
He alleges that Combs once broke his ex-girlfriend Kim Porter's nose during a confrontation on a yacht. He also claimed that Combs attacked a producer with a chair after overhearing them conversing with Porter on a phone line that he allegedly had tapped. Additionally, Curry mentioned witnessing Combs spiking women's drinks with alcohol in the club. The accusation of drugging is particularly concerning, given Curry's implication that he continued to socialize with Combs even after witnessing such behavior. Then you hear about the fact that he broke Kim's nose on a yacht. Wow, I heard that he broke him. Oh, let's, let's say allegedly, but it was told by people in her camp that he broke Kim's nose on the yacht. Then you hear about the fact that he, he broke Kim's nose on a yacht? Wow, I didn't hear about that. He broke Kim, uh, oh, let's, let's say allegedly, but it was told by people in her camp that he broke Kim nose on a yacht. The former bad boy artist Mark Curry would say the exact same thing he says he witnessed the crazy relationship that Kim had with Diddy, how he beat her repeatedly, and how she suffered a lot more in his hands. When the art of dialogue asked him, speaking of Kim Porter, because you knew Kim Porter, is it true that Diddy broke her nose? This was his response. Bust her nose, man. Speaking of Kim Porter, because you knew Kim Porter, is it true that Diddy broke her nose? Bust her nose, man. Curry's revelations add to those of Diddy's former bodyguards, Gene Deal and Roger Bonds, who have also spoken out about their experiences with Diddy following the lawsuits. While these accounts may further damage Diddy's reputation, they also raise questions about why these individuals remained associated with him despite witnessing troubling behavior. A lot of folks who defend Diddy have been saying that Mark is just talking nonsense about Diddy because they had some beef over publishing rights. Well, let me tell you, it's not like Diddy's the only one who's ever had some issues over publishing. If you've been keeping up with this whole thing, you've probably noticed a pattern. Just like he did with Cassie, Diddy would tap into Kim Porter's phone. Mark Curry even said that when someone goes as far as tapping into someone else's phone, or putting listening devices in their homes just to eavesdrop on their conversations. That's a sign of being really messed up in the head. And it's not just Kim and Cassie. Misa Hilton has also been through some rough times because of Diddy. Misa is Justin, Diddy's oldest son's mom. But wait, there's more. Mark also said that when Diddy threw parties, he'd have different drinks for the ladies. These bottles had stuff in them that made them slippery. If the music industry was a person, it would be Diddy. Just when you think things can't get worse, Diddy surprises you by sinking even lower. That's why Gene says that Kim's story is Cassie's story, just with a different ending. Cassie got out, but Kim didn't. But here's the thing, and I know it's touchy, but it needs to be said. Sometimes people who are being abused are in too deep, and they make excuses for their abusers. Case in point, after the nose-busting incident, when asked what happened, Kim said she accidentally hit it on a table. Maybe that was true, and maybe she wasn't covering up for Diddy's abuse. But then, let's jump ahead two years to 2007. Kim was pregnant with their twin girls when she caught Diddy cheating on her. She ended things after that. But in an interview, it sounded like she wanted to make him feel bad for cheating, rather than actually taking steps to move on from an abuser who, unfortunately, was also the father of her kids. In an interview with Essence, she said, I wanted to be dramatic. I wanted him to know I wasn't breaking up with him for two weeks or maybe leaving for two days. But it gets worse. Diddy had a baby with another woman five months before Kim gave birth to their twins. Sean, Diddy Combs, and Kim Porter began their relationship in 1994. Just four years later, they welcomed their first child, Christian. However, their relationship faced challenges leading to a separation the following year. During this time apart, Diddy dated Jennifer Lopez for two years. Eventually, he and Kim reconciled in 2003. Together, they welcomed twin daughters, Delilah and Jesse, in 2006. Unfortunately, their reconciliation was short-lived, as the couple parted ways for the final time in 2007. Now, imagine you're in Kim's shoes. What would you do? If your answer is to distance yourself emotionally from this awful person while doing your best to be there for your kids, unfortunately stuck with a dad like that, then we're on the same page. Sadly, Kim did the opposite. She told Essence that she and Diddy remained good friends. 
Her exact words were, Sean and I have this bond, this friendship. We all know how Kim Porter's story ended. I hinted at it earlier. If you're new to this, Cassie managed to get out because she realized she was with an abuser who was keeping her from leaving. Kim wasn't so lucky. Model and Diddy's longtime girlfriend, Kim Porter, was laid to rest yesterday in her hometown of Columbus, Georgia. The funeral took place at Cascade Hills Church. Her model and longtime girlfriend of entertainer Sean Diddy Combs, Kim Porter, was laid to rest yesterday in her hometown of Columbus, Georgia. Funeral taking place at Cascade Hills Church. Porter leaves behind three children with Coombs and an older son by singer Al B. Shore. Porter leaves behind three children with Diddy and an older son with Al B. Shore. Kim Porter passed away. And as you might expect, a lot of folks who've been following their story suspected Diddy was to blame. But when the autopsy results came back, it was pneumonia that caused her death. And Diddy wasn't even with her when she died. So why did some people think he was involved? Well, it might have something to do with the book Kim was supposedly writing when she died. It was alleged that she did have a book and that her book was about to come out. And she was talking about all the perils, everything that she went through in the music business and with Diddy. It was alleged that she did have a book and that her book was about to come out and she was talking about all the apparels, everything that she went through in the music business and with Diddy. This book was said to be a detailed explanation of her time with Diddy. It was going to spill all the secrets, the kind that would make Diddy really scared. It was going to be so truthful that it could make a big person like Diddy fall. If Kim Porter talked about Diddy's relationships with other men, him giving Usher a disease, Mary J. Blige having a baby with Diddy and getting rid of it, the wild things they did together, and his gross habits, everyone would believe it. No one would question it like they sometimes question Cassie. And I'm not saying they really don't believe Cassie. I just think they're not taking her seriously enough especially since she accepted a $30 million payment. Over the course of his successful career, persistent rumors have swirled about P. Diddy's sexual orientation, but he has opted to keep his personal life private, refraining from making any public statements on the matter. Speculation about P. Diddy's sexual orientation intensified, especially after he established the renowned record label, Bad Boy Records. The curiosity surrounding P. Diddy's alleged sexual orientation was fueled further by the involvement of other celebrities, including prominent figures like 50 Cent, who added to the discussion about this aspect of his private life. But maybe if you heard what the men had to say, then you'd pay attention. Short previously claimed that Diddy once called him up at 2 a.m. to invite him to his hotel room after the BET Awards. He detailed the incident on Instagram back in December, he tried it on me, so I know it's true. I got a phone call in the middle of the night, about 2.30 in the morning, and it was my wife says, pick up the phone. It was an unknown number. It was Diddy. He, he tried it on me, so I know it's true. I was married, my ex-wife. Uh, uh, I got a phone call in the middle of the night, about 2.30 in the morning. It, it was... My wife says, pick up the phone. It was an unknown number, unknown number. Pick up the phone. What is calling you? Who's calling you? Picked up the phone. It was Diddy. The tale Columbus Short shares here is strikingly alike to the numerous accounts shared by other men in the industry who found themselves entangled with Diddy. He moved between two worlds, one openly into the bedroom and the other secretly into the closet. Hey, man. We didn't see you at the BET Awards. Uh, you know what you're doing? I'm like, I'm in bed with my wife. He said, I, uh, I'm at the Beverly Hills Hilton at the Beverly Hills Hotel. I said, oh, I said, what's up? I said, who over there? He said, just me. Hey man, we didn't see what the BET Awards, we didn't see what the BET Awards, uh, you know, what you doing? I'm, like, I'm in bed with my wife. He said, I, uh, I'm at the Beverly Hills Hilton. At the Beverly Hills Hotel. I said, oh, I said, what's up? I said, who over there? He said, just me. Diddy was certainly making moves, trying to assert his dominance. And while Columbus Short wisely avoided getting involved, not many artists were as fortunate. I've already hinted at a couple of names, but there's more to the story. There's compelling evidence suggesting he was involved in similar activities with Ja Rule. 
Why else would 50 Cent harbor such intense animosity toward him? The incident in question reportedly involved butt plugs, a female rapper, Ja Rule, and Diddy in a presidential suite at a hotel in Atlanta. Gene Deal was stationed outside the door, unaware of the experiment happening inside until someone knocked on the front door. Next thing you know, somebody rang the doorbell. We had the presidential suite where we was at. So I opened the door and uh, the dude said, yo, I'm here for my cousin. I said, who your cousin? And he said, uh, Ja Rule. When I threw him into the piano, Puff and Ja Rule runs out the room. Puff got his towel, Ja grabbing his towel, but they butt the naked. In an older interview that is making rounds again, Gene Deal alleged that Puff and Ja Rule engaged in questionable behavior in a hotel room. According to Deal, he witnessed Puffy purchasing a variety of items, including butt plugs, from an adult bookstore. Later in the day, Deal observed Puffy, Ja Rule, and a woman entering a hotel room, carrying the recently purchased butt plugs. He was stationed at the door as security. However, Ja Rule's cousin attempted to enter the room, but Deal blocked him from doing so. This led to a disturbance, resulting in Ja Rule and Puffy hastily leaving the room, only partially dressed. Following a short exchange of words, Gene found himself compelled to physically restrain the cousin by placing him on a nearby piano. This commotion grabbed the attention of both Puff and Ja Rule, who were inside the room. When I threw him into the piano, Puff and Ja Rule runs out the room. Puff got his towel, Ja grabbing his towel, they butt the F asterisk Siak naked. When I threw him into the piano, Puff and Ja Rule runs out the room. Puff got his towel, Ja grabbing his towel, but they butt the f naked. Both men were visibly frightened, yet both were stark naked. Were they engaged in a devil's threesome, or was the devil himself present in the room with them? Both men were terrified, but both men were obviously naked. Were they on a devil's threesome, or was the devil right there with them in the room? It's impossible to say for certain, but Ja Rule provided Gene with a hint when he discovered the reason behind his cousin being restrained on the piano by Diddy's bodyguard. Upon informing them about the incident, they expressed relief that the cousin was prevented from entering, implying that the situation inside the room had become unconventional or freaky. Yo, Ja said, you ain't want to go in that room because there's a lot of freaky going on. I didn't even mention 50 Cent, and we still have a lot to discuss. The number of men who have spoken out about Diddy's behavior in his long career is countless. And you see, the problem isn't about his sexuality. It's more about the way he may pressure men who aren't interested in that kind of thing to do what he wants. It's easier for him to mistreat women, but it's not out of the question for him to mistreat men sexually, especially when he holds something they really need. If you doubt me, then you don't understand how the industry operates. Because if you've been paying attention, you would have heard people talking about it. People like Wendy Williams. Back in the 90s, she was a popular radio host in New York City known for her gossip. During her time as the queen of urban gossip, she often hinted that Diddy might be gay. But things really heated up in the mid 90s when Wendy got hold of a photo showing Diddy involved in what looked like a sexual act with another man. The picture showed a man pulling down Diddy's shorts while they were on a yacht vacation in Cancun. It wasn't solid proof that Diddy was gay, but it was enough to fuel rumors, damage his career, ruin his reputation, and make him a joke in his feud with Sug Knight. And we were on our way to the island of women, you understand? And this all it was, bro. For whatever reason, dude was playing with Puff. He went behind him and grabbed his trunks and pulled them down. And we were on our way to the island of women. You understand? And this all it was, bro. For whatever reason, dude was playing with Puff. He went behind him and grabbed his trunks and pulled them down. Don't forget, this was during the intense rivalry between the West Coast and East Coast in the music scene. Even now, there's a lot of homophobia in hip hop. Even rappers who seem progressive like J. Cole sometimes use homophobic language. So if Diddy wanted to be open about his sexuality, even with support from powerful people on Wall Street, he'd face serious backlash. No one would take him seriously, and his businesses would suffer. That's probably why Tyler Perry always denies those rumors, right? Now back to Wendy. When Diddy caught wind of what she was planning, he got her fired. 
Puff got one of the hottest DJs off of Hot 97 because she wanted to put up a picture of him getting his pants pulled down. Now, Diddy and Wendy might have made up since then, but that doesn't change anything because she hasn't retracted her statement. Meanwhile, 50 Cent still accuses him of being gay every other Tuesday. And you know what's even more interesting? Some people believe that Diddy has been subtly hinting at his sexuality in his songs. Take his verse in the song Hope by Blood Orange, for example. It's kind of strange, but the music video takes it to another level. In the video, two men are shown embracing while Diddy raps the lyrics. Sometimes I ask myself like, you know, what is it going to take for me not to be afraid to be loved the way like I really want to be loved, but that I know how I really want to be loved, but I'm, but I'm like scared to really, really feel that, you know? It's like you want something, but you don't know if you can handle it. Maybe one day I'll get over my fears and I'll receive. That's about as straightforward as it gets. But what many find most striking about him is this. Despite numerous accusations and allegations, there isn't a single video out there where Diddy explicitly denies being gay.